Hello everyone, my name is Amut Sivari. Today we will be discussing the topic reaction mechanism. To begin with, first we have to understand the physical properties of three types of molecule, alkyl halide, alcohol and ethers. So, today's topic is reaction mechanism. The first topic which we are going to discuss is physical properties of alkyl halide alcohols and ethers. Alkyl halide is a molecule which contains an alkyl group and a halide attached to a sp3 carbon. Alcohol is a molecule in which a hydroxyl group is attached to a alkyl sp3 carbon and ether is a molecule in which two alkyl group groups are attached to a single alkyl molecule. Two alkyl groups are attached to a single oxygen molecule. So, to begin with alkyl halides. Before discussing properties of alkyl halides, first we have to understand a very basic concept which is polarity. This concept will be used throughout this topic, reaction mechanism. What is polarity? By polarity, V means the distribution of charge on different atoms. For example, in an alkyl halide molecule, the halide is a more electronegative atom. More electronegative atom. So, naturally, it attracts the shared electron pairs towards it and form a formal negative charge over it. And the alkyl group will have a formal positive charge. Thus, it makes it a dipole. That is, both charge is present in the same molecule. Here is a partial negative charge, here is a partial positive charge. And this molecule will be called dipole. It has both poles in a single molecule. This is a negative pole, this is a positive pole. And this bond will be called polar. As the electrons are not equally shared, the halide group has more share of electrons than the alkyl groups. So, let us see how this polarity influences the physical properties of our molecule. Suppose we discuss the boiling point of alkyl halides. So, while discussing the boiling point, we will consider the intermolecular forces between different molecules of alkyl halides. As we have discussed earlier, alkyl halide has a polar Rx bond, that is the alkyl and halide bond is polar in nature, having a partial positive charge on alkyl and a partial negative charge of, on halide. So, if there is another alkyl halide molecule in the solution, this delta plus the positive charge on partial positive charge on alkyl will interact with partial negative charge on halide and thus they form a sort of electrostatic interaction between them. Thus, it will not be easy to vaporize this molecule due to this is dipole dipole interaction that is the, the uh, posit positive charge on this alkyl is interacting with negative charge of this halide due to this the boiling point 
will increase as compared to non-polar molecules. See, this polar nature of alkyl halide bond is also used to understand the dipole moment of alkyl halide. If we discuss the dipole moment of alkyl halide, we will come to know that there are two opposing factors acting in an alkyl halide molecule. Say, X is either fluorine or iodine. In case of fluorine, which is a very electronegative atom, very electronegative atom. So, the partial negative charge created over fluorine will be much more than in case of iodine. This delta negative charge will be much more in case of fluorine than in case of iodine. But the other opposing factor in this case is the bond distance. The iodine atom is much bigger in size than the fluoride atom. So the bond distance in Ri is much more than Rf and it is very evident from the formula of dipole moment which is charge into distance. So, we just saw that there are two opposing factors. The charge is more in case of a fluorine than in iodine. Fluorine has more charge than iodine. But if we come to the distance, then the bond distance in iodine is much more than fluorine. So there is a controversy. The, flu the charge part is supporting fluorine, but the distance part is supporting iodine. Experimentally, it is found that the order for dipole moment is C, C, Cl, then Cf, then Ci, then Cbr. The third property which we are going to discuss is melting point. We know that for melting point, the only factor which we have to consider is the weight, molecular weight. And for the same alkyl group, the molecular weight of Ri will much more than Rbr, than Rcl, than Rf. So this melting point is straightforward. The simple order is Ri, then Rbr, then Rcl, then Rf because the deciding factor is molecular weight. And then the last and the most important property which we are going to discuss is solubility. Now the solubility generally depends on the solvent which is used. It will depend on the nature of solvent. I, whether it is a protic solvent or a non-protic solvent, whether it is a polar solvent or a non-polar non solvent. For the general case, we will take a polar solvent, polar protic solvent, that is 
the solvent will itself be a polar molecule so in this scenario the i group will be more soluble because it the bond is very polar polarizability and the order will be simply this on going down the group the solubility will increase the second type kind of molecule which we are going to discuss are alcohol now in alcohol there are different parameters that come into the picture let's discuss the boiling point first so if we consider an alcohol molecule that is a hydroxyl group attached to a alkyl we'll see a dominating factor which is hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding is a special type of bonding in which a h attached to a very electronegative atom will form a bond with the free electron that is lone pair electron of another atom so this kind of bonding will be known as h bonding and it will change the scenario completely i want to remind you that in case of alkyl halide the intramolecular force was dipole dipole interaction that is the interaction between the partial negative charge on halide ion and the partial positive charge on alkyl that is the partial negative charge on L halide ion with partial positive charge on alkyl this is a electrostatic interaction but in case of alcohol we have a much stronger force that is hydrogen bonding so the boiling point of alcohol will be much more than alkyl halide the second point which we are going to discuss is melting point again the melting point simply depends upon the molecular weight as stated earlier so as the molecular weight of alkyl halide alkyl alcohol increases the melting point will increase here molecular weight of r1 is greater than molecular weight of r2 this is pretty straight forward if the molecular weight of r1 oh is more it will have more melting melting point the third property which we are going to discuss for alcohol is solubility and as discussed in the case of alkyl halide it will also depend on the solvent which is used for general case we'll use a polar protic solvent now as we have seen earlier that alcohol is itself a very polar molecule this partial negative charge is created on oxygen atom and partial positive charge is created on hydrogen atom due to their electronegativity difference thus this alcohol molecule is considered to be a polar molecule so if we dissolve it in a polar solvent the interaction dipole dipole interaction will help it to dissolve apart from a dipole dipole interaction this alcohol molecule will have a very special type of interaction which we have discussed just now which is h bonding
suppose if the solute the solvent is protic also as we have mentioned it is a polar protic solvent polar protic solvent thus protic means it has h ions so the alcohol molecule can form a hydrogen bond which the with the h molecules of the polar protic solvent let's say uh, water in this case so the solubility will increase tremendously in the case of polar protic solvent for alcohols it will be much much more than alkyl halides and the third type of molecule which we are going to discuss are ethers so the first point for ethers is boiling point now as told earlier ether is a molecule in which two alkyl groups are attached to a single oxygen molecule now this bond is polar but we can clearly see there is no hydrogen bonding possible in this molecule because there is no hydrogen atom attached to the oxygen molecule oxygen atom so the only interaction which will happen in this case is a dipole dipole interaction dipole dipole interaction but it will be a more stronger then in the case of alkyl halide but since hydrogen bonding is absent in this case it will be weaker than alcohols so the boiling point of ether will be somewhere in between of alcohol and alkyl halide that is greater than alkyl halide but less than alcohol due to the absence of h bonding that is hydrogen bonding again in the second property which we are going to discuss is melting point and it is always a straight forward thing which is it depends on molecular weight the more is molecular weight the better it is that is the more is the molecular weight the more melting point it has and the third property which we are going to discuss is its solubility now let us see the ether molecule has a negative partial charge on oxygen atom two partial positive charge on both alkyl groups but it lacks hydrogen bonding hydrogen bonding is absent so uh, if it is kept in a polar protic solvent again the solvent is polar protic solvent the dipole dipole interaction will be there but there will not be a hydrogen bonding interaction but these interaction will be better than the alkyl halide one so it will have a solubility in between alcohol and alkyl halide now let me recapitulate all the things that we have done till now we have considered three type of molecules the first one was alkyl halide
that is alkyl attached to an halide group. Halides are generally represented by an X. The second molecule which we discussed was alcohol that is an alkyl group is attached to an hydroxyl group and the third one was ether that is two alkyl groups were attached to a single O atom. Now the comparison is boiling point melting point and the solubility. The order of boiling point will be alcohol will have the highest boiling point due to H bonding, hydrogen bonding, then comes ether and the lowest one will be alkyl halide. The order of melting point will simply depend on molecular weight for all the three and the solubility will follow the order of boiling point for a polar protic solvent. This is very important. You should remember that we are discussing this re these results are for polar protic solvent. Let me mention it here. These results are for polar protic solvents. You know what polar is? The dipole which is created, the negative and partial positive charge. Protic means the solvent has H ions and it is a solvent. So here comes the end of our first part that is physical properties of alkyl halide, alcohol and ether. Now I want to give you a general introduction of nucleophiles. Nucleophile is generally an electron rich species, electron rich species which can donate electrons to an electrophile. Electrophile is generally an electron deficient species. So, a nucleophile is an electron rich species. Now, electrophile can either be neutral, negatively charged, there is a general misconception in our minds that a nucleophile has to be negatively charged, but that is not true. We have electrophile which are neutral. For example, water is a nucleophile. It donates its lone pair, but it is not negatively charged. Similar is the case for NH3, that is ammonia. It is a, a nucleophile. It donates lone pair of NH3, but it is not negatively charged. So, please keep that in mind that a nucleophile need not to be a negatively charged species. It has to be electron rich though. Now, we will discuss the factors affecting nucleophilicity. How to decide which molecule is a better nucleophile? So, the more is the electron density over an atom, the better nucleophile it is. And the second part is 
the bigger is the size of the nucleophile the better it is bigger size means more polarizable means better nucleophile so keeping in mind these two factors we will be deciding which nucleophile is better our main focus will be on halides as nucleophile alkyls as nucleophile and hydroxyl group as nucleophile so let us discuss halides first on going down the group will find i minus c br minus cl minus f minus so we clearly know that on going down the group the size of atom increases that is i minus is the biggest then br minus then cl minus then f minus according to our second point the bigger is the size of the nucleophile the better nucleophile it is hence i minus is the best nucleophile then br minus then cl minus then f minus now we'll discuss the nucleophilicity in a period that is we want to compare ch3 minus NH2 minus, OH minus, and F minus. See, here we will use the first rule that is, the more is the electron density, the better nucleophile it is. Hence, our order will be CH3 minus, NH2 minus, OH minus, and F minus. That is, on going left to right in a period, nucleophilicity decreases. On going left to right in a period, nucleophilicity decreases. The third part which we are going to discuss is the steric hindrance effect of nucleophile. Like if we have two molecules O minus CS3, 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 and the second molecule is CS3, CH2, CH2, O minus. Now, nucleophile is an electron rich species which attacks on an electrophile. So, let's say we denote an electrophile by E positive. Thus, it has to attack on the electrophile. But, while attacking, these bigger CSC groups will create steric hindrance. So, it will be very tough for this molecule to attack an electrophile as compared to this molecule which can easily attack on this electrophile. So, the bigger steric hindrance it is on the nucleophile, the poor nucleophile it will be. Thus, in this case, this will be a poor nucleophile and this will be a better nucleophile. At this point, I want to remind you that there is a huge difference between nucleophilicity and basicity. Please do not confuse in these two fundamental properties. The nucleophilicity 
is the tendency of an electron rich species to donate its electron to an electron deficient electrophile but in case of basicity it is its tendency to snatch a proton snatch a h plus atom so in this case we will have a plus i effect of cs3 which will make this negative charge much much denser this is a very electron dense species but the inductive effect of this atom will not be felt at this negative charge so in case of basicity this will be a better base but when we discuss nucleophilicity we have to consider the steric factors and we will see that this is a poor nucleophile instead of being a good base now the third point which we want to discuss is leaving group ability what is a leaving group leaving group is a atom or a group that departs from a species and forms a stable ion for example there is a alkyl halide rx in which this x atom departs and form a x minus ion so if this x minus ion is very stable then it will be called a better leaving group if x minus is stable so we'll discuss this leaving group availability uh, leaving group ability in context of halides we have discussed that for halides the size decreases down a group that is i minus is biggest in size this is order of size i minus is biggest in size then br minus then cl minus then f minus so if a one negative charge is distributed over a bigger atom then it will be more stable than a negative charge which is delocalized on a smaller atom thus as the size increases the leaving group ability also increases thus the leaving group ability will follow the same order as that of order of size leaving group abil uh, ability will also be i minus br minus cl minus and f minus this is the comparison of different al halide uh, al halides now we'll be discussing leaving group ability in a period that is cs3 minus ns2 minus oh minus and f minus there is a general rule regarding a leaving group that is the ion which is formed after leaving if it is a weak base then it will be a better leaving group let us discuss how this rule is justified see if it is a weaker base it will always try to snatch an h plus and will form hx and the negative charge will vanish 
Thus, it will be a better leaving group because this negative charge is stabilized by H plus. So, the general rule which we have learned here is if it is a weak base, then it will be a better leaving group. So, let us discuss this in context of these atoms. We know that CS3- minus is a strong base in comparison to NS2- minus, in comparison to OH-. Minus. So, these will never form a leaving group that is this reaction will never happen. You cannot consider CS3- minus is a leaving group ever. The same is the case for NS2. An amine cannot be considered as a leaving group. And this rule is extended for OH-2. We can never consider hydroxyl group as a leaving group. This reaction will never be feasible because we know that OH- minus is a very strong base. Hence, it cannot act as a leaving group. Now we have discussed in a period, in a group, the third thing which we will be discussing is the generalized case for a leaving group. Let's suppose we have a leaving group like this. So, in this case, the electron which are on O atom will be delocalized like this. The resonating structure will be And then again, hence this negative charge is delocalized on three atoms. Thus, this molecule will be considered as a very good living group. We can have several more examples. The, the very well known living group which will be used frequently is the tosylate ion. Here, this negative charge is delocalized at many places. So, the leaving group order for tosylate ion will be very high. It will be a very good leaving group. Now, let's compare these three molecules are C double bond O, O minus, phenyl O minus and let's say R O minus. The negative charge here is delocalized between two oxygens. Here, the negative charge is delocalized on the carbon atoms. And here, the negative charge will not be delocalized at all. So, this resonance has two forms of equal energy. 
in which the negative charge is in on most electronegative atom. Thus, this delocalization will be the best. In this case, the delocalization is from a electronegative oxygen atom to a less electronegative carbon atom. So, it will form a leaving group, but the ability of leaving group will be less than this one. And in the third case, there is not a very good leaving group because the negative charge is not delocalized at all. The last example in this series is of SH minus and OH minus. In this case, the negative charge is on a bigger sulfur atom. While in this case, the negative charge is on a smaller oxygen atom. Thus, this negative charge will be more delocalized and thus it is a better leaving group. SH- will be a better leaving group than OH-. So, we have discussed two concepts. The nucleophilicity, which will be generally denoted as NU minus, but it should be kept in mind that the nucleophile is not necessarily to be a negatively charged species. And the second ability is leaving group ability. The next part, which we will be covering, is reaction mechanism. And in this, we will be discussing nucleophilic substitution reaction substitution reaction and electrophilic substitution reaction. Thank you very much.